Hey guys, Jeff here. So today we're going to be looking at a uh, Ritter Model 803. It's a horizontal boring machine. It's actually a four spindle, but it's got two heads. Each one of these motors runs a single head and that head has two spindles. Right now I only have two bits right here and here. Um, we could put another bit right here and here and it would drill four holes at once. These two heads, this head and this head right here, actually move apart and together, and they move independently from each other. So what you can do is you can actually rotate this handle and it'll move the motor in and out. Um, and you can rotate the other handle and it'll move the motor in and out. So you can actually position these um, for you know holes really far apart or together. Um, so it's got actually a lot of adjustability in it. Um, you can do different thicknesses of material. This table moves down and up. The guard right here that the clamps are mounted on will move up and down and the clamps will actually, you just loosen these bolts and they slide on this slot in and out. Um, so I sold these to guys that, uh, that drill wood. I've sold them to a company that drills uh, plastics and composites actually. they. Uh, the company, I probably shouldn't say that the company they were they were producing for, but uh, a very large cooler manufacturer, we'll just say that, that you've almost certainly heard of, they actually used one of these to drill parts for that company um, in plastic, which was pretty cool little operation. Um, anyway, uh, the clamps on this, these are three inch clamps, so they put like over 700 pounds of force pretty easily uh, downward on wood. Um, so your stuff's gonna stay in place really, really well. Each one has a Foster slide valve. Um, they're very similar to on the Ritter door clamping tables, those AC 20 cylinders you're used to. Um, those have those slide valves on the ends. Well, these also have the Foster slide valves. Um, when you press the foot pedal, what you'll see is the motor will come forward and you can actually see right here the two drill bits drill through immediately these clamps pop down and then what you'll see is they come up very slowly the reason these clamps come up so slowly is that it still needs to be held while the drill bits are retracted. So that's actually very important. It might seem slow to you, but that's actually very important. You don't want these to pop up quickly um, when the drill bits are still in the wood. That can really jack with the holes. Um, so it has three flow control valves on the back. There's these two, and then there's one buried up in there. Um, and then, uh, and each one of them controls uh, a different function. This one right here actually controls the clamps. But if you look at it, it's not actually controlling the air going to the clamps. What it actually is, is it controls the exhaust. So what you have is you actually have something where the clamps pop down and then it slows the air going out of the clamps. So when the air is exhausted out of these, it goes through a flow control valve in reverse fashion. And that's actually what keeps these clamps so slow to come up. One actually drives the whole motor and sled unit forward and the other drives it back or controls the driving of the sled, you know, forward and, and backward. And what that's for is to keep it from going too fast forward. Um, one, it, it can kind of become a little bit unstable. The weight of this sled is enormous. This, this machine's very heavy and a huge amount of the weight is actually in the solid metal sled riding on these linear guides um, and the weight of these two motors with the spindle blocks in them it's actually a lot of weight so you don't want that slamming backward and you don't want that slamming forward you also don't want it slamming forward because you can easily break bits in wood especially if you're drilling with the with a smaller diameter bit the bearings have all been checked on this so the spindle bearings and the motor bearings have been checked with what's called an automotive stethoscope here. Um, an automotive stethoscope is about the best $10, really less than $10 you can spend if you buy really anything with moving parts. Um, get one of these if you're buying this machine or any other machine, anything you get, even, even a new truck. Um, this is crazy cheap. It works just like a doctor's stethoscope. You put it in your ears like this and you hold it by the plastic. And what you do is this little metal probe, you actually stick it 
up to the machine. So you can put it at the front of the motor or the back of the motor and what you're going to do is you're going to be able to isolate a bearing noise. So if a bearing is about to go, um, you'll actually be able to hear that in your ears. This is hard to explain. You'll know immediately if you just go get one of these. Um, put it up to the to a motor, any motor. I mean, not moving parts. Don't kill yourself. Um, but if you put it up to the ends of the motors, what you're going to actually notice is you'll hear the bearing noise. This isn't going to make sense to you right now, but the first time you do it and the first second you do it, and I've done this with tons of my customers, handed them my stethoscope, and immediately they're like, oh, that's what you're talking about you'll recognize the noise that's inside of that motor. And even untrained, you're gonna be able to hear when a bearing's about to go out and when it's okay. Um, it's an amazing, amazing, super simple device. It's literally just some plastic and metal put together. Um, any quality is going to work. I mean, guys used to use screwdrivers held up to their ears and literally wooden dowels. This is just that advanced. The other thing to do is to grab an uh, infrared thermometer, and I did that. Let motors run for a while and make sure that the temperatures are not getting way out of control on them. You don't have to be super precise, but it actually is important just to make sure that things aren't overheating. You'll know when things are wrong. Um, you might not know an exact, you know, to the degree um, temperature, but you are going to notice when things are wrong. So right now what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill some more holes in this wood. This is just a test piece that I've been using. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead, we're going to turn on the motors um, independently again. So that one flips the motor on on this side, and now we're going to turn this one on with that switch right over there. Um, so the next thing we do, the air is already hooked up to this, uh, like you saw, and we're just going to go ahead and put the wood in place. You can put it in place. This is on a dolly, by the way, so you're going to see this thing rock back and forth. This is a heavy machine, and it's a lot of weight moving back and forth at the top, So, um, but you don't actually need to hold it. The clamps will do the work for you. So you can place this, take your hands back, hit the foot pedal, the clamps go down, it drills, Obviously, you saw it rock back and forth on the dolly. Um, and now, when you release the pedal, the drill bits come out and the clamps slowly come up and you can take your wood out. And you can see two holes drilled right there. We'll go ahead and drill another one. You put it in. It's incredibly fast, and the great thing about this machine, flip that off so you can hear me. The great thing about this machine is it'll drill matched holes. So if you want to glue two pieces of wood together and you want to dowel them, you can drill two holes here at a precise distance apart. You put the, dowel, the glue and the dowels in. Well, if you're drilling, if you need the holes in the other matched piece of wood to line up, they're always gonna be lined up. You're drilling them on the exact same machine at the exact same distance. It's incredibly, incredibly handy. Um, this machine, this machine is uh, three phase, but it actually has, uh, the two motors on it are NEMA 56 frame motors. They're simply one horsepower. Um, that's the 56 frame motor is one of the most common motor sizes really in the world, honestly. Um, if you have a drill press, it almost certainly has a NEMA 56 frame motor on it. Um, so if you wanted to convert this to single phase or if you want me to, it's incredibly, incredibly easy to do. Um, it's a one horsepower motor, so it doesn't draw very much amperage. Um, and they're not super expensive either. Um, so you've got a lot of flexibility there, but right now it is three phase. And if you wanted to run it on variable frequency drives um, or just a cheap rotary phase, converter that's actually really economical to do as well um, one last thing about this the weight on this is significantly more than you would think I mean it's it's four or five hundred pounds at least um, so if you do need help transporting this getting this moved into position or set up just let me know I don't mind delivering it and helping you set up um, anyway hope you enjoyed it take care have a great day